listen to the entire interview. Mr. President, thank you so much for joining Hill TV. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Mr. President, new developments on Iran. You said that all options are on the table. Do you believe right now that you have the authority to strike Iran without Congress? I do. I do believe that. But uh, we've been keeping Congress abreast of what we're doing, Sager, and I think it's uh, something they appreciate. We had a lot of folks over the other day, as you know, told them what was happening, what was going on. We were pretty close to maybe making a decision to strike, and then I decided not to do it. Nobody went out, by the way. I was going to make that decision by a certain time, and I decided not to do it because it wasn't really proportional. And uh, no, but I like, I like the idea of keeping Congress abreast, but I wouldn't have to do that. Sure. Nancy Pelosi actually said you must have congressional approval. So you disagree with her on that? I disagree. I think most people seem to disagree, but I do like keeping them. They have ideas that intelligent people, they'll come up with some thoughts I actually learned a couple of things uh, the other day when we had our meeting with Congress, which were, I think, helpful to me. But uh, I do like keeping them abreast, but I don't have to do it illegally. Sure. Mr. President, you said that initially that you didn't have the death toll. So how and when did you get the death toll appraisal for before you were going to go forward with a strike? Because there's some sure. confusion on the timeline. Sure. Well, this is a process that was going on all day and maybe even the day before as to what we were going to do, what targets. And we had certain targets picked out by a certain time. And I was going to make a decision sometime at the end of the day. And I said, come see me at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, they came in and they told me what they wanted to do. I said, how many people would die? Because, again, they knocked down a drone with nobody in it. Right. That's not, So know, to be clear, sir, they didn't tell you initially in the strike 150 people would No, die? because we didn't yeah. even know the targets initially. I see. So the targets came in and I said, how many people would die? And they got back to me very quickly and they said, it could be 150, it could be more than 150, but it could be 150. I said, uh, that doesn't sound good to me. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's right. They knocked down a drone. They should not do that. But if you think about it, we're knocking out 150 people, maybe more than that. So I didn't like that. Mm. Mr. President, you just said that uh, a military strike would have been disproportionate for not downing an unmanned drone. So why even consider military action at all? Well, I think we might need military action. We'll see what happens. Today, we did very heavy sanctions. Iran is not doing well. You know, when I was uh, first elected, we came into office. Iran was a terror. They were all over. We had anywhere from 14 to 18 points of confliction. They were behind every single one of them. And all of a sudden, it works out that now it's uh, a little bit different. Now they're having riots. They're having inflation at 40, 45 percent. It's very hard for them to do what they have to do. It's, uh, they're pulling back all over. And that's, I'm saying that's a good thing, not a bad thing. But we put additional sanctions on today, strong sanctions. We have strong sanctions. Their oil is way, way down. And they're having difficulty. And they can be a very successful nation. They can be a tremendous nation immediately. could start tomorrow. Or they can uh, not do so well for a long number of years. And we'll see what happens. But I hope, uh, I hope they agree that, you know, they have great potential. I say it about North Korea. Their, the relationship is very good. No nuclear testing. We got our, as you know, we got our hostages back. Uh, so many things have happened there. It was, when I came in, that was looking like war. President Obama thought it was going to be war. Okay? We had no relationship before I got here with North Korea. No relationship whatsoever. Nuclear testing all over the place. Ballistic missile testing. That was going to be a war. And now it doesn't feel that way. We'll see what happens, but it certainly doesn't feel that way. The relationship is good. It's a much different thing. Well, I can say something on Iran. It's, it's what we did with Iran, where they're screaming death to America as they're signing the document. They're signing a document. It was improperly done as far as Congress is concerned. You know, when you talk about a treaty, that was not properly done. Congress never did what they were supposed to do. So it was a defective document. It was a ridiculous deal, $150 billion they were getting, and $1.8 billion in cash. And John Kerry, who, by the way, has totally violated the Logan Act, if you look at what he's done, because he talks to him all the time, John, and I'm sure says, don't make a deal, don't make a deal, because maybe it look, makes him look better, probably says, wait till after the election. Because if Trump loses, you'll deal with a stiff. You'll deal with somebody that'll give you everything, just like they did. But John Kerry said that he intends that, and he thinks the money will be used for terror. I don't know if you remember that. But they asked him the question, with all this money that you're giving to Iran, this was the number one nation of terror. They said, 
do you think the money will be used for terror? He says, yeah, some of it's going to be used for terror or something to that effect. That's unbelievable. So it was a horrible deal. And the other thing, it comes due very shortly. So they have an absolute path to nuclear weapons. They cannot have a nuclear weapon. And I don't want them supporting terrorism. You know, I don't know if you know what's happened, but there's been a lot less money going out to terror from Iran because they don't have so much money now. So we'll see what happens. I hope it works out. I think it will eventually work out. They can do it very quickly. They can take a long time. But they've got a lot of problems. And when I first came here, they were looking to take over the whole Middle East, and they would have done it. If I weren't here, most likely they would have been able to do that. Uh, two questions for you, sir. First on, you mentioned, you mentioned Kim Jong-un and the North Korean deal. He sent you a letter recently. Can you tell us a little bit about what's in that letter? Well, it was a very nice letter, and it was actually a happy birthday letter, if you want to know the truth. It was my birthday. And he sent me a beautiful letter, a happy birthday, which is nice. Very nice. And you sent him one as well, right? I sent him a yeah. thank you letter, okay. yeah. I sent him a note. And then a final question on the DNC. The DNC says the Democratic debates, they think they're going to get better ratings in the first two nights than the, tw than the 2016 debate in which you appeared. How do you think the American people are going to react to those, and what are you going to be reacting to? I, I really don't know. I know we had very high ratings. We had the highest ratings in the history of that world. And uh, from all the way at the beginning, from the Republican debates, as you know, you covered it. We had very big ratings. and. I don't know. I mean, it, it could be that there's curiosity to see how bad it's a disaster going on over there. Well, so Joe, Joe Biden's going into this debate as a front runner. Um, you know, do you think that this debate is his to lose? Yeah, I think he can only go down. I don't think he's going up. He's he doesn't have he doesn't have look. There's something different. He's a different person than he was four or five years ago, and he wasn't so hot four or five years ago. And how he doesn't get President Obama to endorse him. There has to be some reason why he's not endorsing him. He was a vice president. They seem to have gotten along. And how President Obama is not endorsing him is rather uh, a big secret. If you want to know, if you know the answer, please let me know, because I think it's very important. And then he goes and lies and said, I asked the president not to endorse me. Give me a break. He said he asked the president because he's embarrassed by the fact that Obama is not endorsing him. So he goes out and says, I asked President Obama not to endorse me. Well, he was trying to get the endorsement. So it could be that President Obama knows something, but there is something going on in that brain of his. Well, what do you mean when you say, I've heard you say this a couple of times, that something's different about him. Like, what exactly are you talking about? I think he's off. He's, he's different. I mean, we've all known him a long time. I don't know him, but I've seen him for a long time. And frankly, he looks different, he sounds different, and he thinks different. Other than that, I hope he does very well. And yeah. then, what, what are you going to be looking for in that debate? I'm looking for nothing in that debate. Uh, I guess it's really a big race to who can give away the most and who can raise taxes the most. One of the big things I see, look, I gave the biggest tax cut in the history of our country. One of their big things is to eliminate the tax cut and raise everybody's taxes. I said, I don't think that's going to play too well. And our country's doing well. We could have — we're online or on — in fact, they just announced it, I guess, yesterday. If June just sort of finishes a little bit just okay, it's one of the best Junes in 80 years. I think the best June in 80 years in many categories. And it's definitely the best June in 50 years. Think of that. June is the best. And, you know, they talk about tariffs. We're taking in billions and billions of dollars from China and others. And yet we're having the best month, June, in 80 years. So a lot of people are starting to say I'm right. Uh, Mexico has been uh, really working hard on the border. The numbers are way down. You saw that. You see, They've been part, trying do you think they're doing a good enough job? I think they're doing — so far, they're doing a good job, and hopefully, they're going to do even a better job. But the numbers are way down. They've been trying to get this for 45 years from Mexico, and I got it. And I got it in one day, and I want to thank Mexico. And so far, they're doing a good job. Yeah, you see the numbers are way down. Yeah. Uh, one last question on the Supreme Court. Uh, would you put forward a nominee uh, between now and the election if there's an opening on the Supreme Court? Uh, would I do that? Of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. Do you have any recommendations? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a big, long list, right? I do. Yeah. I have a good list. I have a good list already chosen. I have a beautiful list of great, very talented people. Uh, absolutely. But do you square that with Merrick Garland? No. I have a lot of respect for Judge Garland, by the way. I have to tell you that. I, I know people that know him. Uh, I'll tell you who told me incredible things about him is Justice, now Justice Kavanaugh, mm. because they served together. I said, tell me. I'm revealing a little, but that's okay. I said, tell me. 
what kind of a guy is Judge Garland? He said he's an incredible guy, liberal, brilliant, and a great guy. That was Judge Kavanaugh said that, just now Justice Kavanaugh. And I was impressed. I've known many people that know I, I know a lot of people that know Judge Garland. And I will tell you, um, I've heard incredible things about him.